All the while I am escaping with E.T. G'day and welcome to the show. Well, this week I'm fishing with my good mate Chris and Dwayne from DNA Barra up here in the Northern Territory. We're fishing a remote part of Western Arnhem Land known as the Mini Mini System. Today, we're hoping to troll up some really good barramundi, maybe do a bit of casting and catch one of those huge big golden snapper. Loads of action, check it out. We go after top end barra. Thank you. <laughs> Crack it towards me. And come up with oh a top God. golden snapper to boot. Cracking golden snapper. Yeah, first troll. Plus plenty more croc country species. Here we go. Topped off with a thumping trevally. <laughs> it's not a bad fish. I also get Brim and Taylor. Nice Taylor. From both Hobie and Quinny. <laughs> oh, there he goes. And <laughs> Chef Paul Brahini barbecues our catch to perfection. When I travel to Darwin, I like to stay here at Sky City. There's no better accommodation or entertainment venue in the top end. With its amazing pools, restaurants, bars, and of course the casino set right on the water, where else would you want to stay? Luxurious as life is at Sky City, I'm on my way to stay somewhere that's completely different. Dwayne from DNA Barra Fishing has picked Chris and me up in the same boat we'll be fishing from for the next few days. And we're on our way to his mothership, anchored deep in the mini mini estuary system in Arnhem Land. This mothership's size is truly territorial, so we know our stay will be comfortable with plenty of space to relax in and get a good night's sleep. But with plenty of light left in our first day, we're no sooner unpacked than we're off to start fishing. This is the place to break out our most serious barra lures. So I'm not wasting any time with my rigging up. And when Dwayne pulls up at the first likely looking spot in this amazing maze of waterways, we get a friendly reminder of why you need to keep a sharp lookout for crocs at all times up here. There's wildlife around us everywhere we look, but our focus is underwater, where our lure selection will be critical to the result we're hoping for. And Dwayne's got plenty of clues on that. There's a lot of bait coming out the creek now. There's all schools and schools of it coming. They're not just swimming, they're, they're all over the joint too, so they're not overly happy. If I was a barrow, I'd be watching the mullet. Everything looks right. My first cast into the Mini Mini. But did I get my lure selection right? <laughs> it had to be there. Geez, he took his time. Oh, yeah, there's just a bit of a colour change in there. Chunky fella. There we go. <laughs> Back in the drink. On this one here, I've changed over to a, uh, a little atomic lure, a couple of sharp gamakatsu hooks. And this guy will get down to about three metres, and that's just perfect for here. So you want it sort of to dive down and a few twitches. So the idea is to get the cast right up as close as you can into that colour change, bring it back through into the clear water, and that's where the barra should be. Okay, got him. Another nice little fella. Plenty of little fellas around. Thanks, Skipper. Got him on a on a classic 15 plus and uh, the current's just pushing right into here, and that's exactly why the fish are here. There you go, another nice one. Oh, good one. They're all just queued up there now. Yep, yep there he is. <laughs> one, two, nice one. Got a little. Another one. Yes, another atomic, a bit more of a deep diver. Sort of sits like that in the water. So far, so good. 
but my tonic vision tells me there's something bigger out there. And sure enough, on the very next cast... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, what's going on? The thing is, it, it could be a Jew the way it's the way it's pulling and, and moving. Take your time. Yeah, Take the your way time it's moving. Take your time with it, yeah. This way a bit, yeah. Coming out for you. Yeah, should be right. Well, that's like a Jew, isn't it? Yeah, he's just there. No. Oh, my God, that's a massive... Oh. A massive snap. Right? Yeah, go in here. Yeah, baby! Thought he was a snapper. <laughs> oh, look at that, bro. Oh, that's a big snapper, buddy. Snapper. Eh? <laughs> He's a nice one, eh? Holy moly, that's a horse. He is a monster. Oh, oh, hey? That's a snapper. Whoa! That's a snapper. Hey! <laughs> 80 centimetre. 80 is beautiful. There you go, my biggest snapper ever. The car just moved it towards me. Well, there you go, just an absolutely cracking yeah. golden snapper up here in the Territory. Yep. Finger mark brim down in uh, in Queensland. <laughs> Happy days. Right, I will let you go. We came for Barra and came up with a PB instead. And there's plenty more DNA excitement coming up. Shimano's ever popular Taipans are back, and these rides are every bit as deadly as the Australian snake they're named after. With actions perfect for a range of bait and lure applications, there's a rod sure to fit your target species. Matched up with the versatile Socorro saltwater reel. With a Tagani gearing, stunning design, and incredibly strong cold forged aluminium spool. The Shimano Taipan rod and Socorro reel make the perfect fishing combo. Down south, my new Mazda BT50 makes light work of getting the Quintrex top ender down to the water at one of my favourite ramps around Sydney. I've invited our chef, Paul Brahini, to come out with me on the hunt for one of my favourite table fish. We're looking forward to a good session of catching and cooking, following my Garmin and casting our light Shimano rods on the quest for a good sized tailor and even on waters as enclosed and calm as this, we're both wearing life jackets just because. This is what we're after. Nice tail up. Here's a good one. Well done, mate. This is what we're after. Yeah. Taylor on the barbie. <laughs> oh, there he jumps. What a beauty. I'll get you to get that net again, because, oh, beautiful. Wow, he's going crazy. He's got that Gilly's lure in his mouth. I'll just take nice and tight to him. Oh. All right. No worries. Hey. Nice fish, mate. <laughs> there we go. Hey, is this a beautiful looking uh, tailor? Actually, they don't cook up too bad. Yeah, they're a little bit of an oily fish, so they lend to being a little bit, you know, like smoked. Yep. So good barbecue, and maybe we can create a little bit of smoke. Try and make it nice and simple as well, so people can do it at home as well. You know, yeah, don't good go stuff. too over the top. Well, Paul, it feels like only moments yeah. ago. We were out here casting metal lures around, trying to catch some tailor, and landed this beauty. Um, how are you going to prepare it? With it being an oily fish, we're actually going to barbecue, but also create a little bit of smoke by using some corn. Got this from down the old local greengrocer. We're going to serve that with our salad. Got some nice, beautiful artichokes from Sandhurst in here. And also some semi-dried tomato in there, some olives and some cucumber. We're just going to toss the corn into that. And then we're going to serve it with a salsa verde, which is some beautiful herbs that we've got there from our local greengrocer. We've got some coriander in here, some beautiful mint. And we've also got an Italian style parsley. What I'm going to do is actually pound that with a little bit of sea salt that we've got from our Creo, a little bit of Creo crush. So let's slide the corn on? Yeah, straight on, mate. So while that's happening, what we've got to do is just make our salsa verde now. So basically, Andrew, we're going to put some uh, garlic in here. Yep. Half a clove. And we're also going to put some salt in there. It causes a bit of abrasion, so okay. it's easier for me to crush my uh, garlic. Now it's time to put in some capers, so we don't need too many. A little bit of chilli in there. Just going to paste this up. As you can see, it's pasting up beautiful with that salt again. It's just really working well. OK, so the next thing I'm going to pop in there is some anchovy fillets as well. And I'll keep that oil because it's really, really good to cook with. Mm. Probably one's enough for this. They're really salty. I'm just going to put our fresh herbs in here now. And we've got a secret little thing that I put in there to make it nice and green is some uh, English spinach. And then we're just going to pop in our oil. So we're just going to pound this now into a little bit of a paste. And we'll just check the corn. 
Oh, looking good. Yeah, looking good. Just give it a little bit of a turn. Yeah, that's it. You make a good chef, Andrew. You don't burn in your fingers, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Shackle. OK, so it's time to get the fish on now. What I'm going to do is just put a few slits in here so, it, you know, it cooks a bit quicker. When we put a little bit of the salsa verde over the top a bit later on, it's able to get in there and get into some, you know... Holds into, it. Yeah, and it also helps it cook a little bit quicker. Now, a little bit of lubrication. So not too much, just a little bit. So this will help it not to stick as well. So now a little bit of salt. I don't need too much on there because we've already got a fairly salty dressing. There is another trick that I'm going to do. I've got some rosemary here because, again, we want to create a little bit of smoke. The guys from the Barbecue and Fireplace Centre on the Sunshine Coast have provided this butte barbie. If you're going to do an Asian-style dish, you could put lemongrass, anything like that. OK, so we're just going to put this on there now. Yeah, so we're sort of semi-smoking it, but it's also giving it a nice perfume as well, which is good. Now, I've just taken the uh, corn out of the husk. I'm just going to blacken the corn up a little bit more. OK. Um, and that's yeah, just let's give this a bit of a flip. Just gonna go underneath the actual rosemary, to stop it from sticking. Wow, that smells amazing. Look in the goods. Look in the goods. And what'll happen now, that will carry on cooking, get a nice smoky flavour, and then we're gonna serve it with our corn salad. We've got our cucumber and we've got some nice artichokes in there as well. And as you can go to ET's website and check all these recipes. But look how beautiful that corn's Oh, that's after. awesome. Yeah, it's really, really nice. It's good when you get fresh produce. Like, we've been able, very lucky to be oh, able to have the local green grocer guys on board. Unbelievable. So we got, like, a warm salad, OK? So it's not cold. Yep. It's nice and warm. And what's great, more and more people are starting to eat some really nice fruit and vegetables nowadays. So we've got our red wine vinegar going in, just a little bit, and we're going to touch a touch of oil in there. So just a splash of red wine vinegar. This is where we've got to be a bit delicate. And we take this guy off, straight onto here, like wow. so. Pretty good? Yep. Yep. Now, just to finish the whole dish off, I like plenty of salsa on mine. It's a, a salsa verde. That looks Sorry. pretty good. What do you reckon? Well, I reckon it doesn't look anything like the fish we caught just over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, look good. at that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that yeah. is absolutely fantastic. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Awesome. No worries. Thanks. Check out how to cook it yourself on our website. Day two of our DNA barra fishing adventure in Arnhem Land. Our guide Dwayne is planning to treat Chris and me to a grand tour of the Mini Mini system, where barra aren't the only prizes on offer, as I proved so well yesterday. Now we're exploring the system from top to bottom to see what other fishing treasures it holds. I would normally start out a bit wider and work our way in to the shallows. And you can find your line where the fish are sitting, whether they're sitting right in close to the structure or out deeper next to the big single tree by himself. They move, don't they? I mean, nothing jumps forever like a blue salmon, eh? One new spot and one species down. Now it's on to the next. Yeah, not a biggie, but a fish. Thank you. <laughs> well done, Skip. Nice one. There we go. Yeah. Beautiful. See you later, mate. That box ticked. We move on to explore further down along this amazing system where Dwayne deploys his Minn Kota electric motor to position us for species number three. And as always, on any water, I'm prepared for the unexpected. Well, whether you're in New South Wales or here up in the Territory, really important to have a life jacket on when you're travelling in a boat. Now, it's super hot up here. The conditions are 35 degrees plus, uh, almost 80, 90% humidity, so really hot to be out in a big jacket all day. So I've just got this nice little hipster one on. If I fall over, pull the cord, and away it inflates over the head. But I can tell you, if I fall in here, I'll be swimming pretty fast to that bank, because there's box jellyfish and crocodiles. But at least this will be on my hip, and I'll feel pretty safe. As we keep moving further down towards the system's mouth, the smorgasbord of species goes on getting more exciting. <laughs> What's underneath him? The big trevally. Yeah, you got him. Jig it. Come down. Yeah, he's all right. 
Oh, that Trevally behind him. Look at that. He's a big one. Yeah, right behind him. Nice clean fish. Good one, Andrew. He's a good one. Better than I thought. Real predator up here on the flats. They love the, the sand banks and the, and the reefy edges. Right up. Oh. Away you go, mate. Oh, he's going all right. Hey? Oh, no, oh, javelin. Good, good javelin. Guy. Nice fish. Wow, That's pretty good. That is an absolute cracking javelin fish. Sitting up here on the flat. Wow, he's a beauty, mate. It would be over the moon to catch this fish. Top left. Look at that. What a cracking fish. He's a beauty. He'd be good eating as the, as the barra. There we go. <laughs> good eating, apparently. And just before sunset, the day's biggest excitement is just about to explode. Oh, jumping queenie. Yeah. Oh, there's that really. Oh, yeah, keep it. Oh, he is trying to eat him. Look. Oh, he's trying to eat it, all right. Oh, I got him. I got him. Yep, yeah, I got him. Yes, baby. Yeah, baby. I wanted one of those. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to burn the hell out of me here. Yeah, he's very yellow. Might be golden in there. He doesn't have stripes, though. Uh, I, do, I haven't seen any... I just thought he was... I thought he was a golden. When, it, when he was following the queenies, I thought he was a brassy to Yeah, OK. Oh. oh, come on, buddy. The sun's going to be... beat us in a minute. Nope. Oh, it's a beautiful little Shimano outfit. This is a Zodius. The rod's incredibly powerful and light, matched up with an X-Sense Little bait caster, 30 pound braid. Oh, and a trevally on the end. And as you can see, he's just thumping away with his big tail. I'll try to work him back. Look at him. See him in the sun? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a nice one. Here we go. We got a net. Yeah, ready. Good one, isn't he? He's right on his nose. Oh, I'm not going to get him. Gonna wait to come oh, back. that was the shot. What about the lure? Yeah, baby. Good work. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Skipper. Well done, Andrew. Nice one. He's all right. Thanks for that. Beautiful. Let's have a look at him. Oh, <laughs> he's not a bad fish. Yeah, he got a bit of weight to him. Hey, look at that. Just give him a bit of a drink. I'll send him on his way. OK, mate, you're right. Oh, there you go. And as the sun finally sets on that big day, we've got plenty more DNA action coming up when we return to the Mini Mini in next week's show. Well, we store all of our stuff in these beautiful Plano tackle boxes and tackle bags. They've uh, got pockets all around them, plenty of room. You can hold a whole pile of Plano boxes and the best way to keep your lures, you can keep them in all the various sizes and all secure and safe. Yeah, the Plano range, check them out. On Lake Macquarie, it's a lot chillier than up in the Territory, but I'm still having fun. Oh, well, there you go. What a beautiful looking fish. He's just hooked. Put out. Oh, there he goes. Just about to let him go anyway. Got a few of the other boys out here today showing us around the place, and these guys are experts at catching everything from tail of big flatties right through to dew. I think one of the boys is hooked up now. And it looks like he's got a long battle on his hands. You've got to have a nice outfit for this one. It's only a, a, a very light rod, two to five kilo, matched up with a 3,000 sustain reel. And yep, he's still on, while his mate has time for a nice catch and release. Well, there's lots of bait moving through on the Garmin. Just got it pointed up so I can have a good look while I'm drifting along here. It's lunged on there. Probably a little red and get everything along here. Taylor, Jew, Brim. Yeah, just a little ready, a little pinky. That's two catches and he's still battling. I reckon I'll have time for a leisurely Hobie cruise to hunt further afield before he's done. 
and probably time to land another fish or two. Not a bad tailor. There's a few good tailor. Nice big brim. But while we go on catching, that long fight must surely pay off soon. And it should pay big. Just crack that jig. And the Garmin doesn't lie, <laughs> a lot of active fish down there. If you do get up early, you've got a real good chance of catching some quality fish. There you go. Beautiful. Look at that big sucker. Woohoo! Well done. Well, this time it feels like a tailor. It's staying down deep, though. Oh, there we go. Nice, Taylor. And a nice release for my hard-fighting mate. Oh, nice brim. Oh. Slip that out, and away he goes. And we'll see you for more escapes next week. <laughs>